stop telling trans people that we're inspirational. I mean, it's fine, it's a lovely compliment, but you do realize we should live in a world where we do not have to be inspirational for you. Where we do not have to have the crappiest life that we almost do not survive and then transcend that and then be an inspiration to you. We have to go back to the beginning and make life better for trans people, period. Trans people have always existed because the mechanism that makes someone trans is gender dysphoria, which is a medical condition. Unfortunately, we cannot change society to a degree where gender dysphoric people would not feel any less gender dysphoric or would not feel any pain. It's funny because I also agree that trans people aren't automatically inspirational. I often get asked to speak about why pronouns are important. And I just want you to consider if a cis person got called by the wrong pronouns, what their reaction would be. In fact, it's seen as the biggest possible insult for a coach to call a boys team girls, right? To be like, she, you know, coaches are not like, look at her, you know. But that it's seen as an insult to misgender someone. If you do it intentionally, you could argue it's an insult. But I have been misgendered many times during my transition, and it was because I had a, a high voice and I looked like a girl. So, I didn't yell. I wasn't mad. I got dysphoric, but that's another story. But you know what, Jeffrey? You are a cis person getting misgendered if someone calls you they, them. You are he, him. We always think of a set of pronouns when we speak to another person, and you can't change what people automatically think in their own heads. So what you experience on a daily basis, I assume, is that people are lying to you. If you're happy with that, go ahead, but I think it's quite strange. That's an insult because it feels horrible to be misgendered. You have absolutely no idea how that feels. You have absolutely no idea what it's like to go through gender dysphoria and getting misgendered, being called something your dysphoria doesn't like. And I'm not saying you can't talk about it. I'm not going to be like, shut up, you don't know what it's like. But I'm just clarifying so we're on the same page. Whatever you're doing and calling yourself, not the same as what I'm going through in any way. But for someone like me, a non-binary person, who has been basically misgendered my entire life for the first 20, 30 years of it, this is a matter of kindness. This is a matter of human dignity, human respect. And if you simply cannot give up on bullying people, if you simply cannot give up on hating people, that says a lot about you. It isn't a human right to be called by your preferred pronouns. You can argue that someone is acting respectful when they call someone something that doesn't come natural to them. However, how in the hell would you respect people like this? Respect is mutual, my friend. When you keep demanding something from strangers, you're not acting respectful. Because there's a difference between asking kindly, could you do this, can you call me this, and then demanding, shaming people if they are not doing it. Just a small thing as calling someone a turf is not being respectful. Because you're calling women something, a slur you could argue, because they do not think like the way you want them to think. You're not being respectful when you don't have a problem calling people transphobic, homophobic, turfs, or whatever. But it does show that you're not mature enough to have an adult conversation about different ideas. So if you keep experiencing getting misgendered, it's probably a you problem. If you're actually nice to people and always show respect, not assuming people's opinions and ideas, maybe you'll get what you want. That is my experience. I have never corrected someone if they misgendered me. I was too dysphoric to correct people, but even if I wasn't, I didn't feel the need to correct people. It was obviously a mistake. 
and I don't want people to feel embarrassed or ashamed or I don't want people to feel bad because of my disorder. I was always respectful and I always clarified my situation with any new person I'd run into and I have great results because of that. It's not bullying people or hating on others if they don't want to bow down to an ideology that does not make sense. There are only two genders, gender and sex are binary, and 90% of all people agree with that. You're not a bully just because you live in the real world. The problem with this LGBTQ people are dangerous for children thing is that it distracts from the real perpetrators. Stat after stat, study after study proves that it is grown men targeting young girls. And while TERFs and the far right are putting my face on Fox News, they're obsessed with me in my apartment <laughs> making videos, the real predators get away with everything. It's almost like they don't really care about children and that all these people are just bigots. The only thing I want to say to that is both sides want the same thing, children to be happy and healthy. How we're going to do that what we should or should not do, we have different opinions on it. So just like I can't accuse him of being a predator or not care about children, he can't say the same thing about the right or the non-woke left. We both want the same thing, Jeffrey. We both want children to be happy. How is a child going to be happy if you put them on puberty blockers? I don't see how that's even possible if we pause their development. By giving them puberty blockers, we are gonna pause their mental development, their physical development, and affect permanently their fertility. So even if we block, let's say, a young boy's puberty, when he grows up, he might not have broad shoulders, probably he would have a high voice and softer skin, and that's great because it'll alleviate his gender dysphoria, but he, he can't have children. He can't have orgasms, and he will experience chronic joint pains. Do you really think it will make him happy? No matter what side you're on, you have to stop accusing the other side of having bad intentions. We will not get anywhere by doing so. You could still argue that one side or a group of people are harming another. I mean, we have to focus on facts and educate other people. That's the way of doing it, in my opinion. And the last thing I want to say is LGBT people are not dangerous for children. The woke ideology, however, is. Thank you all for watching my video. I really hope you liked it. Leave a comment down below. Remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell. If you want to support me with a small donation, I would be really grateful if you could do it under super thanks. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.